And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. I'm going to use the gradient tool in Adobe Photoshop and I've opened up this canvas and I'm going to select my colors down on this left hand toolbar. I've got a light blue and I'm going to create a darker blue. Then I'm going to select the gradient tool on the left side here which is this box, the gradient inside. And Then you'll see this toolbar appear up on top. There's different options that will determine how your gradient looks. The first one is the linear gradient and there's radial gradient, angle gradient, reflected gradient, and diamond gradient. And to create your gradient, you click and drag across your canvas. And then you have created a gradient in Adobe Photoshop. This presentation examines the concept of relearning as well as the role testing plays in learning and relearning information. We hold more traces of memories than we can ever recall, recognize, or reconstruct. While we can't always get to these memory traces when we want to, they facilitate the process of relearning. For example, I took French in college but I haven't practiced it at all since then. When in Paris two years ago, enough French came back to me that I was able to successfully order gelato entirely in French, and I wasn't just pointing to the flavor I wanted, I was actually pulling the French words and grammar I needed out of my long-term memory. We have a large number of memory traces that assist in relearning information, called our memory savings. These memory savings help us reconstruct information in the process of relearning, and as a consequence, we are able to relearn something more quickly than the first time we learned it. How well something is learned initially will determine how easily we can relearn it in the future. Two types of practice used to learn information result in different levels of learning for long-term remembering. <laughs> 